am B I N O I. Know they hate, but I don't know I. Uh, I know the way he did you was whack, but I know how you can get through right back. You can get with me. And we're the incoming and welcome back to our channel. Uh, Hi, I'm Kilo. It's Kilo. Kilo's here with us today because we're talking about LGBTQ issues. Yeah! Uh. Well, technically not really because that was part of the letter. We're talking about Lauren fucking her. Lauren Haraghi, my queen, my She came my out mom. and bitch, uh -huh. bitch, bitch, bitch. I'm so shook. <laughs> <laughs> ATW, I use they them pronouns and I'm agender. I'm your local queer. So, yes. And I am trash. In our last video, I was literally yelling at her, and I still want you guys to tweet that video too because I yeah, want her to see it. Yeah, we're still mad at her for that. But today we're going to be talking about Lauren's she's letter. Said in that letter that she wrote yesterday morning. I love how Josh has his hand on my shoulder, like trying to calm me down. But um, if you haven't read Lauren's letter yet, please do it. I urge you to read the entire thing, it's life changing before rehearsals and was like, oh, here you go, Billboard. Like, here's my letter that I just wrote, um, half five. Also, side note, um, I wanna know how many fanfics are gonna come out named Lauren's letter. Oh mm -hmm. Stupid event. They're probably already, like- They're already there. Yeah, yeah I guess it's- They're true. already there, but I guess they're and just then, like- And then also another thing, people are talking about, oh, Cameron, Cameron, I'm like, stop yeah. making this. It's, it's only Cameron. half true now. It's not about that. Yeah, it's only half true now. Yeah. If like, Camila comes out, which she probably won't, Yeah. At least not right now. Yeah. Then we can start that talking would be like about Cameron it. That like Cameron confirmed and like Twitter would blow up. Yeah. So, yeah. so no one's gonna do that. Let's, Let's not go it. there. Oh. So the letter is addressed to every single Trump supporter trying to say that voting for Trump does not mean that you are racist, homophobic, sexist, xenophobic, assholes. That you, <laughs> that you just like the way he didn't really care what people thought and just said whatever he wanted, that he wasn't a politician, so he wasn't part of the establishment and didn't have corrupt money backing him. This is for you. So yeah. like, we're already starting out with a bang, like with a punch, just like, this is for you assholes that don't spread love and are haters and are racist and everything else. So yeah, we were already just punching the throat to just Mm -hmm. I don't know how she wrote this in like an hour. I don't know where even to start with yeah, this. Yeah, just like, uh, this is a, a long... It was, I read old. it and literally crying, sitting here reading this whole thing. Mm -hmm. She talks about how restoring the America that was only stagnant, wait, restoring America back to what it was, like why would we want to... <laughs> Do that. Like, um, no, I mean like the America that was before was just what Trump's America is, but like all sheltered and hid it, away. Yeah, exactly. The people like, who are racist are just openly racist now. Yeah. Instead of it is keeping ridiculous. it down inside. She says, he became your champion because he spoke to the parts of you that think you are superior to the rest of us just like Hitler did in Germany before the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And then she like cites this autobiography. Okay, this She's reading you people. She's like reading, reading everyone. Like every single person that voted for Trump. Read like a book. And like she that autobiography she just saw. Exactly. The politically correct world we've created, which is really just the world of social etiquette. <laughs> like, do I even need to read anymore? No, like, just social calling etiquette. Calling people what they want to be called, being respectful of people, like, like social etiquette, like being socially aware of your surroundings and acting appropriately. And making sure you don't go out of your way to make someone feel so, okay. Exactly, like just being- There's just used, this like, aversion, I think, with <sighs> people who are against political correctness to something that they don't agree with. You know, yeah. even my parents, at a certain level who don't agree with my identities mm -hmm. are taking in steps and an initiative to be respectful towards me even right. if they don't agree. Right. And that's what being politically correct is all right. about. It's about being respectful towards <laughs> someone exactly. even if you don't agree with them. Right. Okay, where we have weeded out the language of racism and explained why. Where we have established feminism as a growing notion of making women realize their validity and right to be treated as full complex beings. Retreated as the full complex being, beings they are 
and men the same, which clearly needs a lot of work considering how women across America, especially white women, voted for this man who insulted your very existence every time he opened his mouth or disrespected yeah. Hillary during this campaign. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. I don't understand it. Like, yeah, people hate Hillary too much. Though. Yeah, and so understand. she's reading more people. She's reading into them, huh? Just, she? just. Apart from how selfish that is, it is so very unchristlike because your God is watching and he knows your hearts and he is aware of the true reason you choose such a human to run the most powerful country in the world, which is debatable at this point. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I promise you the God that I have come that I have come to know and love is intolerant of judgment and hatred. <laughs> and I know this because I was raised Roman Catholic in a Latin household and went to private Catholic school my whole life. So I've studied way more than most of you have studied the religion or, or the Bible for that matter. So just re just like throwing it back in their faces. Just She's like just shading them like just and Yes, I know what I'm talking about because I've learned more than, you know, you have. Yeah. The average. Don't yep. like say like, oh this is no. Just I I can't. I love this woman. I love the fact that she says, I was raised Roman Catholic. I was raised Roman Catholic. <laughs> I was raised Roman Catholic. I was raised Roman Catholic. Okay, so now we get to the, the part where she, you know, the part that everyone Ooh. is ranting and raving about, which is, isn't is even yeah. like the that focal point of, of, yeah, the, yeah. of this uh, whole letter. thing. Okay, let me just read it. Hold on. Read it to us. Okay. <laughs> read us. I can't read, so yes, our political You read me an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Our political correctness that your champion Donald Trump so uh, pointedly disregarded throughout his entire campaign and now with the appointment of his advisors and other government officials is the language we have worked tirelessly to establish to feel safe in a world that never stops reminding us we are minorities. I am a bisexual Cuban American woman and I am so proud of it. Okay, so... My bitch bisexual. Um... <laughs> My bitch. That's my bitch. I call her my bitch because she's my bitch. Um, yeah. But I'm that. I think she's just stating what she is because yeah, she's yeah. part of a minority. And yeah, yeah she's that's, that's the only reason. Experience. That's the only reason why she's saying that. She's. Just to clarify, we're not saying that we know exactly why she put that line in there. We're just saying our opinions and saying what we think on why she put that in there and why she put it where she put it. We're also not belittling the fact that she came out. That's a huge deal and we're super proud of her and we're super supportive. And you guys know we love her to bits. So, yeah. It's important for her right. to be intersectional because if you just have one thing that makes you a minority, it's easy for someone who disagrees to be like, well, that's just the only thing you've got. Right. Yeah. You need to show that you have intersecting oppressions that are affecting the way that you live your life. Exactly. It's... And I'm really sad that people are just taking that yeah, part and like, making that the whole thing. I also like, want to uh, make a prerogative and say that even if you do have one only one identity that makes you a minority, that doesn't mean your experiences any are minority, any, little, yeah. any less right. legitimate. Right. But like people will tend to be like, exactly. oops. Intersections black. are important. But literally, she is going off. And the bisexual thing is not right. the biggest thing. It's not the point of this no. letter. It's just backing what she's saying. And I, just, I don't and like, want people to like, make that. I'm, base, like, I'm bisexual, and also this is important. Exactly, and that's not all she is. She's yeah. not just, she's not a bisexual artist. She's an artist that just happens to be. Yeah, and I'm really scared that they're gonna like make this the, um, the like, focal, like, every single interview with Harvey from this point on. Like, right, exactly. What's it like being the, I'm like. Exactly, and I'm like. That's gonna be so frustrating though. I know. She said, I'm a proud, proud to be a granddaughter and daughter of immigrants who are brave enough to leave their homes. Another thing, she's like a descendant of immigrants that yeah, Donald Trump generation. basically wants to just yeah. take Second out of the country. Well, where's she from Third. here? Third. Um, her family's from Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. Ooh, okay. But she was born here. I think her parents. It's, it's for yeah. the people who think that Puerto Ricans are immigrants. I'm just like. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're not even going to talk about that right uh... now. Nope. Um, and this, this just got me. I am, a, I am proud to be a woman, proud that the sex between my thighs provides a strength and resilience, resilience in me that only other women can feel. That my body curves in ways that allow me to create life within me, that my entire life is filled with adversity and doubt and people questioning my intelligence and my artistic potential and my expression of myself and my virtue and honor because I am too much woman. Bitch, I was on the floor. Yeah. I could not. Yes. I was like, physically punch me. I was ready. She can take me to church. <gasps> I was on the floor. Drag. Oh. Okay. I also was 
uh, I identified with this line where she said, I am proud to feel the whole spectrum of my feelings, and I will gladly take the label of bitch and problematic for speaking my mind the way any man would and would be admired and respected for, for doing, doing the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's like so many think pieces Ooh. out there written by like liberal men, mm -hmm. and then like they're all like applauded yeah, like, as being so. Oh, wow. Right. You're so oh, wow. Yeah. And then thing. when a woman does it, she's seen as whiny. Right. And or when a black woman does it, which is yeah, my experience, extra. I am an angry black woman, and I have been called an angry, angry black woman before. So I don't, and and I would rather be called an angry black woman and speak what the truth yeah. is than be quiet and yeah. just be like, oh, you know. Really <laughs> hard to like to combat that like complacency because like that's like the first instinct is you feel like, Ugh, whatever, it doesn't matter anyway. Life is meaningless, <laughs> right. but still like you gotta like. Yeah. Gotta say something. This thing that, another thing that got me, that I tweeted about. I am also, I also know that in my struggle of being a woman, I am so very privileged. Oh, I was yes. born with a lighter complexion and green eyes, thanks genetics. So from that narrow, from, so from that narrow minded perspective, I'm white. I have experienced the privilege those genes have granted me and I am grateful and will continue to speak on behalf of women around the world and in my very own country who do not experience a fraction of respect of that respect because of the color of their skin or what they choose to wear or how their hair looks or how much makeup they have on or any other absurdity that we women are reduced to. <sighs> Honestly. Okay, the feminism, but the white privilege though. The white privilege that she is preaching on i was yelling i, Ugh, it's I just like, can't it, it makes me so happy when like people who like because i mean obviously it's like one of those things where all the minorities are like this is a thing that exists but then everyone else is like oh no it's not so it makes you kind of like is it really am i just it's like, real friends this? like am i imagining this and then like when it's people so from the, when people from the other side are like hey yo this is also a real thing it's like it also shows you that like people who may be minorities but who can pass as white mm -hmm. and still benefit from this privilege regardless mm -hmm. of how like and yeah because like, of how much you got in your genes it's what you look like exactly yeah. white privilege exists people i would try oh gosh it exists it is not my opinion it is, I'm not trying to force it on people. I am just telling you that white privilege exists and if we don't point it out yeah, like, I, I, I took a genetic test, okay? For those of you who are like, I'm all white. Like, I took a genetic test, and I am 99% European, but I'm also, like, I think, like, 0.6% West African. Mm -hmm. And even though that's, Which like... most people are. Yeah, like, yeah. most people have some amount of, like, every continent in them. You're going to <laughs> determine race by what your genetics are. Our whole landscape of yeah, what race looks like will be completely different. Exactly. Because, that's what, yeah. yeah, we live in a visual society. Mm -hmm. I'm taking, like, a, um, a history one class right now and I'm learning that like a lot of times when um, slaves would like when the slave owners would um, have children with their slaves and eventually it would get so diluted that you weren't you wouldn't be able to tell mm -hmm. like the slaves who like oh my mother was a slave but I'm able to benefit from the fact that my skin is so light that you wouldn't be able to tell right. that I'm able to go into society and like not be looked at as dark skinned or as black or anything less so it exists people it's a real thing mm -hmm. and it, if you are a person of the white persuasion or if your skin is very, very, very light, you have a privilege whether you are aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. You can walk down the street and feel completely safe as opposed to yeah. someone with a darker complexion who will have to watch out for everything. Yeah. That oh, like okay. the racism is at such a subconscious level right. that like, it may not exactly. even be based on looks, if you have like the wrong name, like mm -hmm. Watermel Andrea, I'm looking at you, Raven. <laughs> who's, not, who's not gonna hire somebody for having a name that they did not choose. Who like, should be in Canada right now. Honestly, like, mm -hmm. don't, you anyway. have, like don't you have to get some practice being a divorced mother for your new TV show? Like, and it, I'd also like to point out that, especially considering that there's a lot of liberal havens in the United States where mm -hmm. people claim that it's so progressive, and yet I just read an article about a woman and her girlfriend who moved down from Canada to New York City and even places in New York she's like in fear and like they're both white mm -hmm. of being bashed. Yeah. Imagine how much worse it would be if they were people of color. Exactly. 
The thing, one thing I want to get across to people that are of a lighter persuasion, you guys need to speak up for us because they don't listen to us. Yeah, they, really they will not listen to us. No matter how much we protest, no matter how many times we get shot, yeah. no matter how many times we educate ourselves to try to like better, our, they will not listen. So you, it is your responsibility to speak out for us. I mean, we'll be there with you, honestly. We are trying, we're doing our best, but you need to, because they yeah, don't listen to you. I'd like to make a comment on, like, I know some of you might be taking part in the paperclip campaign where you wear a paperclip oh, and yes, someone please. sees that you're a safe person to talk to, and I think that's a cop-out. And here's why. The short version, I'm gonna have a whole video for this on my channel, but basically... Link to this later. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll link to it later. Yeah. Um, it gives you a license to remain silent in a situation where you should help out. And that doesn't necessarily mean in an actual situation. Basically, when you wear that paperclip, you feel like you're doing something to help end racism. But really, you're just wearing a paperclip. Right. What you can do to help end racism is talk to your white friends who are maybe racist and help Using them the N-word. <laughs> yeah. What you can do as a white person to help the plight against racism, first off, is you can support black-owned businesses. Yes, amen, yes. hallelujah. You can also join a local activist movements. I know that in Dallas, they have a couple of movements that I've gone to protests for. And I was surprised at how many white people I saw there yeah. to help. Um, another thing you can do is be socially aware in your own situations and step in and yeah, educate your white friends. Yes. That's the most important thing, because yes. they will listen to you. Yes. They will listen to you. Yes. Use your privilege. It, recognize you have it, and then use your shopping. privilege. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like what people say. It's like when you become, like when you're put in the public eye, like kind of like we are at this point, which is like not even the public eye, right? Mm -hmm. But like now we realize that we have at least somewhat of a platform, so we're not gonna let that like go to waste. Exactly. So anyone with any sort of privilege it's should not let this. that go to waste. <laughs> Right. Like, and also, this was a, this video was not going to be about this originally. It just turned into it. Yeah. yeah. So last, the last um, like little section of this thing. If I could tell every Trump supporter two things, it would be to travel <laughs> and read a history book. And she Ooh. did this. Oh, guys, look beyond yourselves. <gasps> look at how petty the morals. <laughs> you uphold Ooh. seem when you realize <laughs> we are not the only ones. Realize that your white skin is a result of immigration from Europe. That the only true Americans are Native Americans who are indigenous people that inhabited this land before these conquerors from other countries, England, France, Italy, Spain, wiped them out <laughs> almost entirely. None of us belong here, but all of us deserve the right to feel safe and live our lives in peace. To not have to worry about uh, potentially dying or being electroshocked or beaten or raped or emotionally abused because of our existence and or our choices for ourselves upset someone else. This is the world Trump is fostering. Yeah, which is again what a lot yeah. of people don't realize. <laughs> They're like, oh, I just voted for him because I don't like Hillary, but there's a lot more stuff that, that goes, goes with into it. That. I, like, I suppose there's also a lot of stuff that goes into voting for Hillary, not my first pick. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, not my first no, pick. No, she wasn't my first pick. The only reason I liked her was because she was good. Have the highest chance of winning. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the division that has risen since the beginning of the campaign. We are not America invisible any indivisible any yeah. longer. We are united on two separate sides, love and hatred. Yeah. Literally, literally, yeah, yeah like that that's, is it. Yeah. That's why again I was like, I'm not even necessarily scared that he's gonna repeal anything. Like, um, he's gonna repeal, what was it, Windsor v. U.S. or like, um... Marriage Equality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He or, wants uh, to repeal, um, Roe v. Roe v. Wade. Wade. Yeah. Like, not even, I'm not even scared of, cause like, that's a, if we have another Democratic president, that's gonna go right back in. So like, it's just four years of that. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm just like, this is not the time that we need. Like, I don't, I don't think anything's really gonna regress that much. I'm like, this is not the time for, like, stagnant. Yeah, we need seconds. to continue mm -hmm. to yeah. organize and stay together. We can't stop here. Even if you aren't going out into the streets, which is great to feel like you're a part of a movement. Further than that, we need to do these things that we've been talking about to help end racism, to help end discrimination. And uh, yeah, it's just a process. 
Okay, so the last thing she says, we're not whining about our presidential choice choice losing. Yeah. We are screaming battle cries against those whose political and personal agendas threaten our lives and sanity. Yeah. Okay, we are making sure you hear us. No matter how much it bothers you, we exist. Exist is in all caps. Yeah. Can, I, can we just all just applaud this woman right now? Just almost honestly. I shook. I'm still sh like. I'm crying. It. Mark of art. Oh my god. The words of Jasmine Sullivan, a masterpiece. masterpiece. Yeah. Literally. And the fact that she wrote this before she went to rehearsal. She's like, oh. Like, it is the how about people, my Mary Way? I want to know the people that question her intelligence. Like, what do you have to say now? Like, mm -hmm. and I also want to say, please, 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 from the bottom of my heart, don't even know how to explain this. I just don't want this whole thing to be about her bisexuality. Yeah, don't make it about that because that's, not, that's about. not what it's about. I'm actually, yeah, I'd like to say that like she did a really, really good job of pointing out how it's not necessarily. Trump himself that's creating exactly. racist America. Yeah, exactly. It's that People's white supremacists supporting. feel empowered Ex by Trump's victory. Thank you. It's the fact that they now feel emboldened. They, people, yeah, they mm. feel like, oh, because my president elect is, can do this, can say this, I can go in the street and, and harass this, and this, this Muslim, this gay boy, this black man. I can it's... <sighs> and it breaks my heart that these women, these Muslim women, I know, are like, afraid to wear their hijab. It terrible. breaks my heart. It's, at, like, it's the same with me. Like I feel comfortable when I'm expressing myself, when I wear makeup, when I wear feminine exactly. clothing. And it's exactly the same for them. They're expressing their religion. They're expressing their beliefs. Right. And if they can't do that, I feel terrible. Guys, this is like taking a turn. I know. But anyway, I just want to thank Lauren Hareki yeah, for, for doing this. Thank you, Mommy. If I, I, I if I thought you were woke heart. before, you woke now. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. <laughs> Spread love. Um, I almost started crying, but it's okay. Oh my gosh. I was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I'm always ready. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video an average size, thumbs up, and subscribe. We make new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Make sure to comment because it gives us joy and happiness, though. So, uh, and this is Kilo. Yeah. Hi. They have Hi. a channel. As in grams of Yeah, so King. like I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. On Thursdays I do a series called Gender Funked where we talk about gender bending fun things to do. I do drag. I'm a performer. They need to come see me. I Why don't you come see me yet? Because we can never Because we're talk. trash. I already told you. Honestly, that I know. <laughs> and five, six, seven, eight. Everything's okay. okay. When, when you dance, dance on, on the runway. Sassy. Yes, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Lara. Hi, I'm Josh, and we're the incoming and, and I'm Kilo. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was not too early. Yes. <laughs> I want to get that in. <laughs>